This video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to my review of the Next Level Racing HF8. For those tuning in for the first time, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Oh God. For those who don't know, the Next Level Racing HF8 is a what they call a haptic gaming pad and not like a gaming pad like a controller but rather a cushion so this quote-unquote cushion for retail price of 230 dollars us is a haptic feedback producer of various sorts that's rather than producing you know vibrations that you pick up in your controller or in your steering wheel it's actually a cushion that you sit on. It has eight individualized motors. Uh, there are four in the seat and then four in the back. And what it does is it makes for an extremely immersive experience. If you're into flight simulation, like uh, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, or if you're much like myself, an individual who likes to dabble in some sim racing. I can't say that it is a perfect unit, but at the end of the day, in my opinion, it is a very well built product and it is, it really gets the job done. For an individual who just does random driving games and whatnot, this has really revolutionized my experience playing driving games to a form to which I don't think I'll be able to go back to just playing on the sim without it anymore. So like I was stating before, the Next Level Racing HF8, coming from Next Level Racing, a well-known, notorious sim racing and flight sim company, is offering this plasticky, fake leather kind of cushion for about $230 US. It includes a female, a 3.5 millimeter jack. It includes a male, 3.5 millimeter jack. Don't connect them together. It doesn't do anything. Uh, of course, it also includes the power adapter and includes a USB port. So what you can do with this device is you can plug it in to a computer via USB or kind of an interesting uh, side thing that you can do is rather than using USB, you can actually use the 3.5 millimeter male jack and connect it to any kind of console that you have, whether it be a PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox One, well, One X, and then Xbox Series S and X, I believe. I'll post here in post um, the different list, well, the list of compatible devices. I'm not sure if it goes all the way back to the Xbox One, but I know for a fact it goes back to the PS4. So when you use the USB version of the device, more or less when you plug it into your PC, you're able to download a application from Next Level Racing's website known as HFS. And what it does is you are able to sort through 14 compatible programs or applications, and you're able to set up respective zones, like which specific motor should fire off in which specific uh, situation. And then of course, what intensity it's firing off or vibrating off at. So as, as you heard correctly, it is only supported by 14 different programs, uh, 11 of which are racing games, two of which are flight sims, and one of which is just kind of your computer um, audio card, per se, or audio device. So I'll put this on pause for a moment, and I'll show you guys kind of what I'm working with here. So with a set of courts of Compizione, they give you an option of gear shift, brake, rev limiter, acceleration speed, uh, engine, RPM, and suspension. And when you first get it, it's all at 100% intensity. All of them are on and all the zones are on. So kind of like the computer graphics card, well, not graphics card, the computer uh, sound card option. Uh, when you just have it on, it's just like a massage chair. There's, it's unfortunately when you go to... Um, the virtual sound card here you really don't have whole whole lot many options here and i guess that uh if something is louder than something else the the motors will fire off at a higher intensity but what i found is that it's like a compressor is on it where all of them are firing at the same 
intense vibration all at the same time. And it's just like, like I said, a massage chair. So uh, for those who were interested, these are kind of my settings that I've got uh, going on here for Seta Corsa. Um, more or less gear shift is localized to the top of motors. The brake is mo uh, localized to the motors down here. Engine RPM is kind of in the lower area here and up here. And then the suspension uh, left and right down here um, for the front and then for the rears, it's kind of actually in the lower back. So when you have that going on versus just this drone out can constantly going mundane vibration where everything feels the same and it doesn't really feel like you're really connected with uh, the game you get a really cool experience where you've got just all sorts of senses kind of hitting you all at the same time if you've got a direct drive wheel you feel the bumps in the roads and you're fighting with the wheel trying to get it to be able to get into the right direction you're using your feet for the pedals to try to gain control of the car uh, of course, you're absolutely just bombarded with the sounds of Assetto Corsa Competizione, which, again, I cannot state enough how amazing and intense and hardcore the sounds are in this game. But now, the nice thing, too, is you've even if it is minute, even if it is potentially not fully realistic, the addition of these vibrating motors and this cushion that you sit on while you're driving is otherworldly. I I am just honestly in a lot of different cases really speechless with this. For those who have butt kickers, which is a product that this uh, HF8 is directly competing against, the reason why Next Level Racing releases prods, prod, product the reason why Next Level Racing released this product is that with the butt kickers, they're honestly really cool. They are, instead of a motor, they are a speaker that provides a low frequency kind of rumble that you position underneath your sim rig chair. Now, the issue is, is in order to use that, you need to have access to a sim rig. So we've already dumped a ton of money into that. But on top of that, it takes a lot of setup of connecting the amplifiers to the speaker. And even though you can use multiple butt kickers, in my mind, I think that actually is really cool. Uh, each one, each individual speaker is about $320 for the base version and maybe $350 or $379. I can't remember what that pricing structure was offhand for a more higher end version. Now, this is for one speaker. So again, kind of like I was stating earlier, when you have the virtual sound card setting on, you just get a rumble and that's kind of it. If you have multiple butt kickers, then you start getting the localization. That being said, when you start doing that, it's mainly only in your butt, thus the name. And if you get the four of them to get each point, you'll have been spending at least $1,200, not including the Simric setup. So that's where the next level of racing HF8 comes in. For $230, you get eight different motors that you can customize if you have it, of course, plugged in via USB. So in my mind, it is a significantly better deal. And the really cool thing about it is that you can convert any chair. So if you're just getting into sim racing and you're using your kitchen chair, you just put this cut. Oh, God. So if you have like a kitchen chair that you're just using in your living room, you can actually put the cushion on top of your kitchen chair and you get the same experience that I'm experiencing right now. And in all honesty, the pricing is perfect. It really is. It is like not $500 or $750. So only like experienced, like people who are really willing to experienced sim racers, individuals who have like a really expendable income to just drop. The fact that they kept it so low and the fact that they made it so portable means that if you want to be able to use it for your console gaming in your living room on your couch, so be it. And that's what I think is exquisite. It's really cool. So drawbacks are it's kind of like a fake 
plastic leathery kind of thing it, it the material is not great and if i honestly in my mind have a pretty comfortable uh, ergonomic office chair and when you put this cushion so when you put this cushion on that chair you feel none of the softness of said chair and you just kind of feel this hard fake leather kind of material now of course the more that you use it the more that you break it in it probably will conform to your body shape over a long period of time considering that this is only my second or third time actually really using it it's still pretty firm on top of that this is not at all like uh this is not really a complaint against next level racing because i honestly don't know how else you do it you can technically feel all eight individual motors, especially the ones in the bottom part where you, in kind of the lower, further back motors, you're almost directly sitting on them. So again, not that comfortable. It could be that I'm just maybe not having the correct seating position that is more meant for like bucket seats and using an office ergonomic chair is probably not what it's meant for. I digress. It's still there. One of the other drawbacks is unfortunately what I was kind of alluding to earlier is the software. Considering that it's still so new, you have a very limited amount of options. Like I was saying before, all the zones are on all the time when you first set it up. So again, you don't really get a sense of what everything feels like individually. So I had to turn off quite a bit and I'm still in some cases feeling like there's a lot of just I'll call it noise, where it's not very specific vibrations. It's just the entire thing is vibrating, and you're not quite sure why. A lot of people in my mind probably should turn off engine RPM, and I think that's what I'm mainly specifically talking about. At the same time, though, I do like having that on because it gives that sense of realism that you're like in a car and it's moving and it's going. You can technically do that with rev limiter, acceleration, and speed. And again, they just kind of add noise. When you have all these zones on, when you want something like a gear shift to really pop out and like punch you in the back and saying like, hey, you're shifting the gear like, whoa, like you don't feel it because everything else is going on all at the same time. So thankfully, you can change some of that. When you have the audio mode, like the 3.5 millimeter jack versus the USB mode, you can't really change whatever they give you. Like, well, you plug it into your PS5 or PS4 controller, and whatever it is is what you get. So if there's something you want to change on the audio mode, you just kind of have to suck it up and deal with that, which is a little bit unfortunate. I don't know how else they do it or change it. Maybe, hopefully... In adding support via usb to these consoles but for the moment it's a little bit disappointing that that's the only way how you can really play these consoles so back to the software these are fine options in my mind when i bought this unit the thing that i was really thinking about is when your car oversteers like when your back tires lose grip and you feel your car kind of lift up and you feel it going in the rear. I don't know if you would want to feel a vibration or if you would want to have a constant vibration that then suddenly stops when your wheels start breaking traction. I think it would probably be you would feel vibration when they break traction as they're skidding. But that being said, you don't get that. You're, there's no like tire grip or anything when it comes to the software closest thing you're going to get is brake or suspension, which leads me into suspension. You would think that if you go over a rumble strip or if you go into the grass that all the motors in these designated areas would just absolutely go crazy. But what suspension is measuring in at least a set of courts of compensione is suspension travel. So you'll be going down the straightaway and you'll go over a couple of bumps and you'll the suspension will go up and okay you'll feel that cool but what's weird i'm not sure this is actual to racing cars but what i felt is you go over a rumble strip and your stiff tires for instance it's over here it'll pivot the car like this these suspension don't travel they're just stuck upright 
but the suspension over here are compressed, which is counterintuitive in my mind. I would think that if you're going over a rumble strip on this side of the car, that the suspension would compress. And yes, this side over here maybe a little bit as the car tilts, but whenever you go over a rumble strip, you'll feel it on the opposite side. So it's almost like you want to reverse them in some cases. But then in other cases, when you feel the bumps, you'll feel them on the correct side. So I'm confused. So back to the experience. As we're driving, I feel the engine RPM like that it's going through my back, like it should in my mind. And when I brake here, I'll feel in the front like the car the front of the car is diving in and i kind of feel that um those vibrations of course i guess realistically brakes don't produce much vibration but this is just what goes on my in my head that these are the feelings that i'd want to feel if i were driving a race car of course um like i said the brakes you'll get that and the gear shifts that's a really nice touch too because when you're driving an expensive sports car or if you're driving a supercar, when you shift, you'll have this momentary like suspension as the car stops driving forward, as it grabs the next gear, and as it comes back with that click into the next gear, it kind of shoves you back a little bit. So as you go up into the sixth gear here, of course, I'm going for dramatic effect. It doesn't actually push you back or anything, but you feel that vibration. I love that. I love that. I love this this little product. I do, because this is something I've been thinking about for a while, and then suddenly, like just as I was thinking about it, Next Level Racing is like, hey, guys, guess what? You know, sim racing has been big for at least the last three years, and especially because of the pandemic and whatnot. So I'm surprised it took next level for racing or whomever long enough to realize oh hey we should probably have competitors to the butt kicker but like i said earlier this is kind of what i was talking about here so that there that was weird i actually did feel it on the correct side but now if we go off over into the grass you feel like some of this like, I was only really feeling that off of the rear suspension, weirdly enough, when the entire car was violently bouncing. I figured that with the suspension in the vibration tabs would be going crazy, so the entire thing would be like... Bah, 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 bah. What I really felt... What I really felt was like, bum, 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 bum. So, again, I feel like... I like that they have these options, that there are specific things that you can change and certain things that you can specifically define. But I really hope that Next Level Racing continues to support this product. If they don't, if they're just like, okay, these are the 14 games that you can play or 14 applications you can use, and these are the eight options per application, if that, uh, have fun. We're done. I would be really sad. Because I feel like that Next Level Racing have really... have really hit something. And I hope that we see more competitors to this product. And I actually had a thought of my own where I wonder if I want to buy a second one of these and when I do eventually get a sim rig, rip apart the seat of the sim rig and put the motors in the chair because then you'd have a genuine bucket seat. It feels like a bucket seat. And then you've got the motors installed already. So I wonder if Next Level Racing could potentially already be working on that, where one of their um, gaming seats that they'd be selling in the future, specific for Sim Racing or Flight Sim, would have those motors pre-installed. If they don't do that, I feel like that they're missing out on a huge market. I also feel like that that's a market that a competitor could definitely fall into. So I don't know, um, like, comment, or subscribe if you guys, you know, comment down below if you guys actually want me to show a tutorial of me when I, oh god, 
So I don't know. Comment down below if you guys want to see a, a tutorial or just a video of me potentially ruining a two hundred and thirty dollar um, cushion to embed motors into a racing seat whenever I get that. So yeah, let me guys, let me know in the comment section if that's something that you guys actually want to see or not, or if I'm absolutely completely crazy and recommending something like that. So now that we're done with the USB version of the device and with the uh, Assetto Corsa Compensione, let's swap over to playing with a console. And to do that, I am going to need this USB cable for my direct drive wheel. Plug that into our PlayStation. And then the other thing that we need to do, a couple of things actually, make sure that the 3.5 millimeter male jack is plugged into your PS4 or PS5 controller. And then this is something that I can't show because it's like underneath my chair. There is a button box. It is a black box with a red wheel on it. And this little box, what it does, it both... First of, all, first of all, it turns on the unit. But secondly, the little button is a dial. So with the dial, you on the fly can change the intensity, the overall intensity. So of course, on the USB mode, you've got all your different settings and adjusted, you know, in comparison to one another, you can just turn it all down or turn it all the way up to 100%. So change modes, I believe it starts in the USB mode. So it'll start as a solid color if you're in the most intense mode it'll be red if you're kind of in the lower intensity it'll be kind of like a greenish color so you hold it it'll turn like this weird kind of pinkish color and it'll start blinking and then after about five seconds you'll release it and it'll continue blinking but in the relative intensity color again low intensity green and then higher intensity red if it's blinking in these new intensity colors as we'll just call them now that means that it is now in the audio mode. So with the audio mode, it's a little bit interesting because like I said before, you'll plug in the 3.5 millimeter male jack into your controller. Then you must be thinking, oh great. So now all the audio is still going through HDMI, right? For PS5, no. When you have it plugged into the controller, that just immediately means that it thinks that you're listening via headphones. So it cuts all audio out of the HDMI and that's it. So instead of needing to use a headphone splitter every time you use the um, Next Level Racing HF8, Next Level Racing was cut enough to include a 3.5 millimeter female jack. And the reason why you do that is that's what you plug your headphones into. Now, if you want to use the HF8 with a TV and just have it coming out of your TV speakers, you'll have to find some weird audio solution where you take a 3.5 millimeter cable out of the female side in the cushion and drag it off to something like some speakers or something, and it will be a lesser quality than you want. Kind of an oversight, but... I feel like this is more on PlayStation for not offering a HDMI and headset out mode, which to be fair, why would you when you think about it that way? So how I've got is I've got a 3.5 millimeter cable coming out of the cushion into my video mixer. So you'll probably hear some artifacts and not great audio from the PS5, but this is all we can do for the time being. So my apologies ahead of time if it's subpar. So here we are in Gran Turismo 7. Uh, we are currently on Spa once again. And rather than being in our 2019 Acura NSX, we're actually in our 2009 Acura NSX. So one thing that I did happen to forget to make mention is when you're in Assetto Corsa, if you notice, there is no damage vibration. It's kind of a hit or miss. If you like, you hit a wall or something, if you'll actually feel it or not, which is in my mind, like that's the thing that you would want of everything else removed. That's the thing that you absolutely need is when you hit a wall, you gotta feel it because you hit a wall for God's sakes. <laughs> so in comparison to the audio mode, 
I, of course, got the background music off. And what you feel here is it feels like it's at like 50% or 75% of what the USB version was running. Like you still have your vibrations. Like you feel the rumble strip actually this time and at a higher speed or a higher RPM, you actually feel just like the car starting to vibrate a little bit, which is kind of neat. Um, I want to see here. Do we feel the gear shift? Just a little bit. Yes, you do get a little bit of a bump there. And actually in the front, as you're starting to reach speed, I think it's like the, the air flowing under the car almost it feels like, or having like the air, something do, with the aerodynamics because there's the front two motors are vibrating. So I imagine it's got to do something with like aerodynamics or something. I, I'm not a mathematician. I'm not an engineer student or anything. The thing that I'm trying to do, which I'm doing very poorly, is to describe the experience. I should confirm that this cushion is not going to beat the absolute shit out of you. It is just something that you'll you'll feel minute to mild medium vibrations at its highest intensity so that being said if you are not a pc gamer and you love the absolute crap out of gran turismo i'm rather disappointed with the lack of options that you get with the 3.5 millimeter version which again makes sense because all it's doing is recognizing the sounds that are being input to it and then responding accordingly so again i hope in the future somehow some way stars align and we get this usb version compatible with consoles because consoles still do have a usb a port so in my mind i don't understand why next level racing couldn't make an app or a program or something with these consoles so at the end of the day is this worth it it is i don't know that's the that's the weird question in my mind because it is definitely game changing in a couple of different ways where it is finally finally you're getting a comprehensive well defined feedback through vibration of what is happening with what's going on on screen in a sim racing game i.e. Gran Turismo or set of Corsa Compizione I say well defined in comparison to the butt kicker I think the butt kicker from what I've heard is okay but I don't think that it gets up into your back as much and I do really like the fact that the HF8 does get up higher into the back where you can start parsing away at individual signs individual sounds a little bit better or individual uh, mechanics a little bit better but in my mind they're still kind of muddy they're still sometimes they kind of mix with one another because you'll have you know different types of things happening at the same time through the same motors so sometimes it just feels like that they all blend together sometimes so that being said i feel like that this is a good start the lack of functionality in the app, like the amount of different games that are compatible, as well as the different options that are available, is lackluster at best. And I really hope that they add more to it. And that's, and that's the thing that I'm really going to keep my eye out for, is what they do from here, now that it's out. So, is it worth it? Yeah, I I honestly think that this could definitely be game changing. It's really, really, really not perfect. The thing that I struggle with a lot is it does take quite a bit of setup, whether it is physically putting it in your chair. Yeah, it's got a couple of really neat straps, but the absolute rat's nest of cables that come out of this unit is 
a little bit overwhelming at first because you need a power outlet. You need... Uh, you've got like two 3.5 millimeter cables roaming around. And then if you got the USB cable and trying to keep it all tidy is impossible because when they come out of the package, they're all like really tightly wrapped up in that every other kind of like back and forth motion. So I don't know. You'll spend a lot of time trying to like get out all the kinks and whatnot. So it's, there's just no good way of making it look. So the best option I have is find a chair that you'll use for sim racing or flight sim or just general gaming or listening to music or whatever, and just convert it into the gaming chair or something. Because the amount of time, kind of like a direct drive wheel, the amount of time that you spend like trying to move it and then plug it all in and get it all set up, make sure it's turned on and running. Unfortunately, this cushion's fate will be similar to a butt kicker, where honestly, if you just set it up and leave it, it's probably your best option. So my apologies to those looking to game with this on the couch in their living room. You're going to have cables all over the place and it's going to be a pain in the ass to store and then take it all out and plug everything in and then troubleshoot because it just randomly decides to not register for whatever reason. I don't know. But again, it's 230 bucks and it gives you an incredible sensation. I can't say that enough. It is... I don't want to be cliche or hyperbolic or hyperbole or I don't know what the, that terminology is. It is my mind game changing because if you go, if you sit down and you do a racing game with the HF8, you'll feel all these different vibrations and sounds and everything. And then you go back and you play on your normal rig or you just play without having the cushion it's going to feel really weird. And that was the experience that I had not having it on, you know, a time or two when I tried it. Or it's just like you're, you're sitting there and it's just you don't feel anything. It feels like you're losing the sense of the sense of feel at that point. Even with a direct drive wheel, you completely remove a, a sense of immersion. So in my mind, if you pair this with a direct drive wheel, with a VR headset, you're never coming out of that thing. Ever. <laughs> I think it's the fact that I'm just sitting here, that I am aware that I'm not fully immersed, that I can talk about this really objectively. But if I were to pair like a PlayStation VR 2 headset with this experience, I, I wouldn't know when to come out to eat. Or, or to sleep. I would just be that would, I'd be in like next like ready player one. I would just that would be it. You know? So my apologies for rambling. This is more of a subjective review more than it is like objective. Because I mean you can see all sorts of different YouTubers talking about the same stuff. You know, the product size and the you know the motors and you know this, that, the other thing. In my mind this is this is what it feels like to own it. So in my mind, 230 bucks is a pretty good deal, especially when you consider the competition is 100 bucks more easy for one little speaker that you then have to do all sorts of setup for. So this, you can, in some cases, you can slide on your chair and kind of be done. But there, you still got to plug in a lot of cables and stuff. So I think I'll leave you guys with that. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We've got a couple of more reviews coming up. I actually tested out, finally, uh, PlayStation's Remote Play. And it had a lot of interesting experiences with that. So make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell for when I finally do release that in about a couple of weeks there. So again, stay tuned for that. Of course, if you enjoy this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We got some more stuff coming on up, and I think you guys will really enjoy it. So again, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful day today. Take care. Bye.